Good job this week, Spencer. Thanks. Your last day conducting for maybe the whole year. I don't know. If we do one week every person, that might be enough weeks to get you off the hook the next time. Good job. All right. For so I had uh, accidentally assigned one person to do music and personal share twice uh, in in within one week. So that's my fault. And I checked in with the person this morning. They're like, uh. Now I gave what I did last week, but I can do it again. It's like I have to. So I, I, I'll just cover it today. So what I want to do um, for for the share, let me see if I can. Yeah, this is a song. It's, it's not really a super great melody, but the lyrics. So um, sometimes lyrics to songs will come into my mind that um, teach me something. It's like the words will just be there that will be like a message that I needed to hear or it will explain what's going on. I don't know if you've ever experienced that, but it happens to me all the time. And the words of this song come to me quite a bit. Um, so you, you all know the tune, right? I'll go where you want me to go. But the words say, it may not be on a mountain height or over the stormy sea, it may not be at the battlefront, my Lord will have need of me. So those are like heroic things, right? I'm going to go do the big stuff. I'm going to like be the hero or whatever. Um, but if by a still small voice he calls to pass, I do not know. I'll answer, dear Lord, with my hand in mine. I'll go where you want me to go. Perhaps today there are loving words which Jesus would have me speak. There may be now in the paths of sin some wanderer whom I should seek. O oh, Savior, if thou wilt be my guide, though dark and rugged the way, my voice shall echo the message sweet, I'll go where you want me to go. I'll say what you want me to say. There's surely somewhere a lonely place on earth's harvest fields so, so wide, where I may labor through life's short day for Jesus the crucified. So trusting my all to thy tender care, and knowing thou lovest me, I'll do thy will with a heart sincere. I'll be what you want me to be. I'll go where you want me to go, dear Lord, over mountain or plain or sea. I'll say what you want me to say, dear Lord. I'll be what you want me to be. We don't have any idea where the Lord is going to take us. We don't have any clue when and where we're going to be needed. And he's going to take us, he's going to take you, if you have a willing heart, as he's taken me, to service opportunities you would have never asked for or predicted or felt qualified to engage in. Nevertheless, you find yourself there. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about that, but that's, that's the music. Thank you for this opportunity to also bring the Holy Spirit to the church. 
Nice that you're living the gospel with your family. Okay. Personal share? Okay. So, um, I got this text message yesterday from somebody that I know and care about. Think about what you would do in this situation. Pin on card 0609. Joseph and Samuel's birth years. Passwords are always well, can give some passwords. Other pin would be 1028. My dad's birthday. Carpooling e-brake in front of semi I-84 westbound. I hope he doesn't get hurt. I'm sorry. I can't do this anymore. I love you. Please protect my children. The house is unlocked. The cat is outside. Please take care of her. I'm sorry to go this way. I love you forever. So, wow. Kick into like somebody needs help right now in a major way. Might be too late. What do you do? So, fortunately, I was able to get this person on the phone, and they were completely hysterical, um, out of control, and had attempted to take their life just moments before and it didn't work thank God so um, and maybe an accumulation of all of my life experience I don't know um, working on being able to try to keep myself calm in moments of emergency keep a clear head when there's something urgent or scary happening, staying in control. Um, maybe it's love that I feel for the person, um, but whatever it is, in that moment, I was able to be there for the person who's in a lot of need. And that ties into this song, I'll go where you want me to go, I'll be what you want me to be, doesn't matter if it's big or small. Like, I'm willing to go there and be there and do that, if that's what you want me to do. And I want us to think about, just for a second, um, like, who
who are we becoming? And in a moment of crisis, are we going to be the person whose shoulder people are crying on because we have got ourselves put together? Because we have done what must be done? Because we are sure and solid and steadfast and dependable and we have the light in us so when there's darkness we are a pillar of strength in a moment of crisis do you want to be the person that is the strong one or do you want to be the person who's completely falling apart and how you live your life on a daily basis determines you know at the funeral are you going to be the one who's losing it or are you going to be the one who's holding it together and being a strength for other people right when somebody is in a moment of need are you going to have whatever it takes to be there and do that thing um, or are you going to freeze are you going to run are you going to have no clue or be afraid to get engaged to engage and to help out so my share is just like go where the Lord wants you to go the spirit will gu is guiding each one of us all of the time we're always getting whispers to us all the time of little things to think or to say or to do or to be it's always coming at us and if we can just manage to do that then we'll be prepared in a moment when the world comes crashing down to stand steadfast and to hold our ground and to be a strength and a light to those that need it who don't have the same access to the light that we have and it's a great blessing to be somebody who can help somebody else in their moment of need and I leave that with you in the name of Jesus Christ Amen, amen. Okay. All right. okay we've done what must be done um, and See, I thought about what I want to do today. We'll take this discussion a little bit here. I hope you had a chance to write down some ideas. We're going to finish two, two main thoughts from our study over the last, over this week. And then we'll see if we can get some basket questions as they're kind of piling up. Before we do that, does anybody have anything on their mind that they'd like to share um, that experiences you've had lately or questions that you have? that you want to ask for contributions based on what we've been doing in here this week? Just an opportunity. Okay, cool. Oh, yeah. Um, just like one thing. Um, I was reminded recently of just praying to two different ways, kind of just how the Lord is always looking out for us. Um, I have like an online class that I've been stressing out for for weeks. I haven't like had a day where I can just go home and relax and not work on any homework since like midway through August. I just go, like either go to work or go to school, go home, do homework, have dinner, do homework till twelve or four in the morning, sometime in there, and then get up the next day and review. Um, it's been kind of my life for the past like five, six weeks or so. Um, but like, I had a due date that was today for that class, and I still had three units to do, which equates to about 12 to 16 hours of homework. So, um, and so, so I've been really worried about that last night, and then I had a test that was like a four hour test scheduled for today. Um, and then in, in looking through that online course, I found a button that said course extension. And I clicked it, and for like 20 bucks, I could extend the course for two <coughs> months. And that button hadn't been there before. I don't, like I swear, I had never seen it. And then just in this time where I just really needed it, like poof, I have another three months. And the stress just slipped right off. And I finally had the day where I could just like go home and relax. It was fantastic. Uh -huh. um, but really think that in that situation the Lord knew that I've been working on the, that really hard I've been stressing for forever I've been having trouble keeping up with other stuff so he put that there just like hey I gotcha I know that you struggle with some things like that or maybe for your life's kind of tough I'm going to give you an easy out for now 
Um, it's the best twenty bucks I've spent in my life. <laughs> but, um, like seriously, that right there, just the day I needed it, mm -hmm. just right that moment that I needed it, it was right there. And um, and like maybe I just glanced over it earlier, but yeah, whether it had been there or not is irrelevant. You saw it when you needed to see it, mm -hmm. right? Because that was just like. Yeah. I didn't expect that to happen at all. I hadn't been praying for it at all. It just, he did it for me. I was here to bless him. That's good. Cool. Thanks for sharing that. Love it. Anything else? All right. Let's open up our scriptures. Um, well, actually, I'm going to read a few of, the, of, of your comments on this, which I love it because you're making statements of truth. You're like you're you're figuring stuff out, and where are we getting this information from? The Word of the Lord. Um, it is great to have discussions, but also you know to share our ideas and opinions. And that's all. It's all useful, and to get into the scriptures, there is light there that chases away darkness. You remember when Jesus was um, on the mountain uh, top and being tempted. Every time the devil gave him a temptation, do you, do you recall what his response was? Every time he started his, Jesus started his response, his rebuttal. Was it the scriptures? Yes. Do you remember the phrase that he said, by chance? Okay, if you don't, it's like I'm coming out of nowhere with this. But yeah, he quoted scriptures, thus saith the Lord. And then he quoted scripture. So every time Satan came at him with a lie, a false promise, he came back at him with truth as he had learned it in the scriptures growing up. It was already in his bank, in his piggy bank, because he had put it there and his parents had helped him put it there. So in the moment when he needed it, he had the truth to chase away that darkness. And so there is value, great value in knowing the word of the Lord in the scriptures. Because it gives us a tool, a defense, a shield, and a sword to use in the fight when we're encountering darkness. We can chase away the darkness, the lies, and the false promises of temptation with the Word of God. If we've got the words in our head. That's why I love reading your comments here. Listen to this. Every man receives his own reward, whether that be from below or above. True. True. I know all this is true. I know Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ love us and we and are able to teach us the truth and to help protect us from Satan and his followers. So trust and have faith. I love this. As they're reading scriptures, they're knowing that they're true. Powerful. Here's this. You only get what you give. Don't ask the Lord to make you good. Be the good. Commandments are to help us. Here's to actively chase darkness away with light. Powerful statement. Just what I was getting at there. As we pursue Christ, we will be blessed. I love that word, pursue. It's not just like sit here passively and expect Christ to come in carry me up to heaven with me just doing nothing, right? Pursue Christ and you will be blessed. It's true doctrine. Truth is simple. There is no doubt or question. Truth equals knowledge. The power is in us. We are free. <laughs> this person is really good at s summarizing stuff in like little, little, little simple phrases. We are free. Satan wants us sad. <laughs> Perfect. Here's the, here's one. Do good, get good. Yeah. Oh well, that yeah. <laughs> if we don't repent and follow the commandments, bad stuff will happen. I'm not making fun of you. 
Uh, didn't I say this? I like how, how these are summarized in little phrases. It directs that what you said. You don't have to out yourself in <laughs> class. False spirits deceive. Beware if they're not good. Not edify equals darkness. That's a key. If it doesn't edify you, what does edify mean anyway? Keep. Edify. Okay. What is edif? Yeah, I mean, give it a shot. I think, I think it means like teach. Okay. Okay. Good. What else? Other ideas? To edify. It's like a confirmation almost, like supporting in a way. Uh huh. Okay. I think of it like. Okay. Having knowledge of other languages helps sometimes. So edificio is like a building, an edifice is like something that's been constructed. So if it doesn't. To edificar in Spanish means to build up. That's helpful, I guess. The romantic languages all share some Latin in common. So it means to, to me, it means to build me up. It helps me feel better. It helps me feel good. The teaching builds me. So things that build me give me confidence, hope, assurance, peace. Those come from the Holy Ghost. Then you know you're being instructed by the Holy Ghost. But if it's the opposite of edify, which is to build, right, then that means to tear down, to destroy, to bring you down, then it's not from the Holy Ghost. So let's be let's just be aware of that, right? Follow what edifies you, builds you up. If it doesn't edify, not edify equals darkness. Well said. God loves us and will do anything for us. True, except what? God will do anything for you, except one thing. Yes, right? Yeah, except force you. Who's the most powerful being in the universe? Huh? God has all power, all knowledge, because he has lived truth long enough that embodies all truth. But you have more power than God in your life. Who's the most, most powerful being in your world? You, right? Because God won't force you. He could. He has the actual absolute power to do so, but he won't. Yes? Go for it. Yeah. Okay. Beware and take heed. Satan has his ways of Satan and his ways. He will deceive you. Your reward will be what you choose to follow. Everything in these scriptures is truth. Truth is all the things as they are. I know that what's in these scriptures is true. You will be rewarded with what you do. If you continue to go in your own ways, your sins are not pardoned. Well said. And with that, I want to go into a couple of scriptures. That's a good lead in into you will be rewarded with what you do. Open up your DNC. We're going to read these scriptures all in a row right now, and then we're going to get a main message from them. So DNC 59, let's go like, I don't know, starting with Heath, and go down the line there, Iola, Skyla, Eliza, we've got these four scriptures. So let's read here. So Heath, you'll be DNC 59. Iola, 56, 12 to 13. Skyla, DNC 59, 23. And Eliza, 130, 18 to 21. Let's uh, get a main message from these before we move on from this segment. Everybody, follow along. If you're marking stuff, these are awesome scriptures. 
So, Heath, go for it. Wherefore, let every man beware lest he see that which is not true, which is not in truth and righteousness before you. And if my servant Joseph Smith, the man with me, carries money and vehicles, I the Lord will put it on the in the land in the land in the sanctuary, that those who sing hymns shall receive may be rewarded again according to that which they do. For according to that which they do, they shall receive even a man for their inheritance. Okay. Are we picking up any key word here? Yet. First one, beware about what? Look for this word as we're reading here. Okay? Skyla, 59, 23. But learn that he who hath the works of virtue shall receive his reward even in peace this world and eternal life in the world to come. Doeth the works, receive the reward. Go ahead, Liza. Whatever principle of intelligence we attain unto in this life, it will rise with us in the resurrection. And if a person gains more knowledge and intelligence in this life through his diligence and obedience than another, he will have so much the advantage in the world to come. There is a law irrevocably decreed in heaven before the foundations of this world upon which all blessings are predicted and predicated. And when we obtain any blessing from God, it is by obedience to the law upon which it is predicated. Okay, good. This, this truth all comes through the prophet Joseph Smith. If you believe these words are true, what does that mean about the prophet Joseph? To me it means he's given us this truth. He must be connected with the source of truth. He's authorized as prophet to teach us these things. So beware lest you do that which is not right. You do the works, you receive the reward. You obey the law, you get the blessing. There is nothing free in this economy of God, right? You have to choose everything that you will receive, except the opportunity which is given free by Christ through his atonement. He gives us the opportunity, makes us free, and then everything we receive after that is because we chose it. So, you don't get any of the blessings unless somehow you obeyed the law upon which that blessing is predicated or based. So, do we receive according to that which we know? You get rewarded based on what you know, or what you hope, or what you intend to do one day. The key word there is do. It's do. What are you doing? What am I actually doing with the information that I'm getting here in seminary and at home and church and throughout life? What am I actually doing with it? And if I'm not doing something, if I'm not living it, then it's not going to help me. In fact, it could actually hurt me. So let's think about that action piece. You receive according to what you actually do, not what you know. So can we, how does my desire determine my destiny? So if we start with desire over here, we start with destiny over here. Destiny meaning what I actually end up with at the very end, right? What I become, where I end up, what reward I eventually receive. Can we build a little chain here? From our desire, what flows next? What'd you say? Uh-huh. 
So uh, there's action there, but I'm going to say action is going to be like next. Um, I would say thoughts come next. Okay. And then from your thoughts, which are based on really what you want, what you are motivated for, that produces thoughts, which produces actions. Our actions repeated create habits. Yes. That's exactly what I was going for. Our repeated actions create habits. And the habits that we live with, to me, I mean, a little bit arbitrary, to me that creates our character. Who we are. And our character, who we are, as a whole package, will eventually determine where we end up in our destiny. That's our destiny. Am I missing something here? Do you have something to add to this? So, what you want is what you get, but this is the chain that it follows, maybe. Thoughts, deeds, I would probably say words go in here too. So we got to be aware of, of how we act in the world. That, that is going to bring us reward from one, what, from one side or the other, I think. Any comments on this? Just wanted to hit this before we move on. Make it really clear that the importance of, of the doing part, not just the knowing, not just the hoping, not just the one day I might, not eventually I'll get there. What you hope to do one day is not going to bless you. It's what you do now is what's, what's, what's going to bless you. Yes. Okay. All right. Let's get this little bunch right here. Trevor, Caleb, Jeff, these three sets of scriptures here. I think President Malky said decisions determine destiny. Right? Which is true, but it starts before decisions. Decisions are based on what else, right? So yes, it's right. It's half the story, though. Okay, Trevor. And everybody, let's follow along. These are great ones to mark. Some of them we've already read. I think, you know, they've already been in this little reading assignment. Go ahead, Trevor. Behold, this day the Lord unto my people, you have many things to do in Jerusalem. For behold, your sins have come up unto me and are not okay so what I wanted to pick out here is in your own ways okay next let no man think he is ruler but let God rule him that judges according to the counsel of his own will or in other words him that counsel it will sit with upon the judgment seat. Okay. Next. They seek not the Lord to establish his righteousness, but every man walketh in his own way, and after the image of his own God. For his image is in the likeness of the world, and his substance is that of an idol, which lies the soul in Calcareus and Babylon. So you guys get a lot of philosophy in the world about going at it in your own way, right? Have you heard, you do you? That's a pretty common phrase, right? You do you. So whatever's cool. I don't judge. Like everybody just do what they want. You be whatever you choose to be. Now, there's, is there truth in that? But where's also the underlying sort of problem with that? People will end up doing stupid things. They will judge other people. 
So you doing you is fine so long as you're in a vacuum and you don't touch or bounce off of anybody else, right? Okay. Anything else? Comments about that? It's a dangerous philosophy because then we're saying, like, we rule, right? Instead of recognizing that there is an objective truth and there is a lot that we don't know about this world and this universe that we exist in, we're saying, I'm just going to do whatever I want to do, whatever I feel like doing. And there's a problem there because then we are ruling, we're not letting God rule in our lives. We're going at it our own way, counseling after our own ways, and ignoring what God has to say about his ways. And then we, we um, I like the DNC verse a lot, 16, because it kind of shows us the, the, the trajectory of going uh, like on our own path. Seek not, they, they seek not the Lord to establish his righteousness, but every man walketh in his own way. And after the image of his own God, whose image is in the likeness of the world, and whose substance is that of an idol, waxeth, waxeth old and shall perish in Babylon, even Babylon the great, which shall fall. So if we base our actions and our identity on what we, just the world that we see around us, if we just manage ourselves according to popularity, or what's easier, or what's going to get us the most gain, then we're building our, our image in the likeness of the world, in the tangible world that we just see around us. And God is saying, no, 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 there's, there's a different world than the one that you see, and the one that you operate in. So, be aware of that world, and the world that I'm telling you is true. And live for that world, and not just in the image of the world in which you reside right now. So be convinced of the reality of that other world, and live for that world. The world yet to come. The spiritual world that we're in. Um, so don't, no, let's not say you do you. Like, you do Christ. Let's put it that way. You do God. Do God's way. Don't do your way. God's way is always better. It's better. It works. It works better. Um, hopefully that was helpful. You guys are awesome. Thanks for being here. Um, I love you, and hope you have an awesome weekend. I'll leave this with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'll please some of you at the game tonight. Have an awesome conference tomorrow. I'm excited for you. Good times.